Hi everyone, welcome back. Uh, today we're making a very popular Indian street food for you. We're making samosas, and I'm sure everyone knows what that is. And uh, you know, you can have it at breakfast. I do. Uh, it's a tea time snack with some nice hot chai on the side, especially in this weather when it's raining outside. Um, you know, it reminds me of the streets, and I love to be outside eating street food. And I can't do that right now because of the coronavirus. So I'm recreating that experience at home. Uh, for you, along with of course my dear wife, uh, who you know very well, she is like the most, she's more popular on this channel than I am. Um, so, so to start off with, we have some nice chatpata tangy ingredients, and I'm going to serve it with uh, two kinds of chutneys that are pretty much go like peas and carrots with samosas. This is tamarind chutney, and that's a mint coriander chutney. And uh, while this is all going to happen, we need to get with the dough, starting the dough. So with that. And to the baking queen, she is going to do it for us. Hi everyone, I'm going to be making the dough and the covering for the samosa. We're going to start with two cups of maida. I have put one spoon of salt in this. We're going to use about a teaspoon of ajwain, which is carom seeds, and. Uh, ghee and oil combined these are what is going to go in there i'm going to add the water very slowly because i want the dough to be a firm consistency i'm just mixing the dry ingredients together and then i'm going to start pouring in the oil and the ghee while doing that i can help you clean up get some stuff out of your way thank you so much at this point the dough has to be very crumbly. This is what it should look like. After I mix it really well, then I'll start putting in the water very, very slowly. This is just going to take about five to seven minutes. In the meantime, over to Varun. Perfect. So let me get started with the samosa process. For that, I have some oil that's hot in a pan. To this, I'm going to add some zira or cumin seeds. Half to three quarter teaspoons, not much. And then we're going to add some uh, ginger as well. That's about one teaspoon of ginger that I want in there. Turn my heat up. And the other thing I want to add is the cashew nuts. So when you add these cashews, they give a nice, toasty, beautiful flavor to the samosa. So let all of that work. That's going to take a minute or two, and then we'll start adding the rest of the ingredients slowly. So my cashews are nice and toasty. You can see they're brown. So I'm going to add my green chilies, and this is optional, um, it adds a lot of flavor and of course you want something that's spicy when you think of a chaat. So, you know, green chilies always add a lot of flavor. So just a little bit of that and give that a quick stir. Then I'm going to add in my uh, peas. And now my potatoes. And then now we're going to add all our spices one by one. So I'll start with some zira powder, this cumin powder, half a teaspoon of that. This is roasted cumin powder, it's more flavorful than regular cumin powder, so I'm using that. Then I also have um, a half a teaspoon of garam masala as well in there. Okay, you have an option of adding chaat masala or amchur, and this is amchur, which is uh, this is chaat masala, excuse me. So I'm going to add another uh, spoon of that. And I like it a little tangy, so I'm also going to add some amchur. You don't have to add both, but I like it. For salt, for this much potatoes, about 3 quarter to 1 teaspoon is plenty. So remember, chaat masala also has salt in it, so you don't want to put too much salt. And last but not the least, I'm going to add some green as potato. And that's just a pinch, about that much, should be good. So we're done. And that's basically my filling for samosa. So I give that a quick stir and I also want some color. Maybe I'll add some haldi to this. You don't have to, but I'm going to add about half a spoon of haldi in about a minute of this as well. As you can see, my potato mixture is nice and done. So at this point, we just top it off with some fresh uh, dhania or coriander. And my stuffing is ready. How's your dough looking? Uh, so is this dough. Perfect timing. It's looking beautiful, nice and round. And look at this. It's really good and firm. When I push it in, it doesn't bounce back, it stays in place so that shows that the consistency is correct. We're going to let it rest for half an hour and then we should 
put the cool filling in here. Okay, so my masala is ready. Um, and our dough has rested for half an hour. I had covered it with a dry cloth. I'm going to roll it out to a thin sheet. So we want to get this about 8 inches by 6 inches. That looks almost there, I think. They cut in half along the width. Yes. Okay. And then I'm going to make one edge of it wet. The one that we're going to fold and stick together. Like this. You have to stick it really nicely before we do the filling. Okay. And I'm ready to fill it. And... Just gonna wet this edge as well. Then pushing the, the filling to the edges. I'm going to stick it. That looks good. Okay, so while Anu is making the rest of the samosas, I'm going to take the ones that we have ready and rolled out, perfect shape, and drop them in my oil. The oil is, we don't want the oil to be very hot, we want it to be about medium, and that's good right there. So you want light bubbles, you don't want it to sizzle. And this way the samosa comes out nice and golden brown, instead of tough on the outside and you know, the maida not cook through. So this is going to take about 2 minutes on each side, and 2 to 3 minutes maybe, and then when it's done, we will have samosa ready for you. Okay, my samosa also almost done. It looks perfect, nice golden brown on medium heat. Two to three minutes on each side. And I'm gonna grab them one by one, take them out. So there you have it folks. Samosas by Anu and me. So teamwork always works best. Do subscribe and I'll see you next time.